Now this is an actual meeting of where I went July 28, 2016. I always keep a tape recorder on me at all times. Why? Hey, a tape recorders, if everybody carried tape recorders, the lawyers and the private investigators would be out of business. You wouldn't need to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on an expensive trial or anything like that. So anyway, this is a continuation here. Now notice what it says. No guns. That's good. Now about they do it for boom cars. This is the Panama City government building. I have tried looking up lead correlation. The only thing I can find is their Facebook page, lead correlation, and I have been trying to get a hold of the list of attendees that came to this meeting, and so far I ain't been able to find it. But you can best bet they're gonna they're gonna work that list over real good. And they'll be sending out either mail or making phone calls or something like that to scam these people. These well-meaning people that came to this meeting who sincerely wanted to try and find a solution to the friction between the cops and the citizens. <laughs> Bob Pell is an attorney of where I had traffic court one time, and and this had to do with uh, uh, where a cop took me to court uh, because uh, I was riding my bicycle down the road um, in a lawful manner, which 316.2065 the Florida statutes gives me a right to do. Not only that, 316.083 of the Florida statutes specifically states that cars have got to stay three feet away from me, and 316.304, the Florida statute specifically states that a bicycle has got to be able to hear surrounding sounds at all times. But forget about the boom cars, they can do as they damn well please. So I've known Bob Pell for a long time, and what's really amazing is just by his face I knew him. <coughs> My name is Alan Camry. I'm the Dean of Workforce Development at Gulf Coast State College, but I also have the pleasure of serving as the Chairman of the Board for the lead organization. Um, tonight, like I said, is indeed the second in a series of community forums to determine how can we work together with law enforcement and our communities to make our communities safer. Recent events with citizens in, in depth and recent events with law enforcement being targeted and, and actually dying is something we do not want to see happen in our community and it's something as a, the people here in the United States do not want to see happen anywhere in the United States. 
Now, I find it awfully interesting. There is a show that's put on by ABC whore motherfuckers. How to get away with murder. And I find it awfully interesting. Hey, cops. Oh, they got a constitutional right to do that. But when Ice-T a long time ago put out a, a, a CD called Cop Killer, all of a sudden the cops, man, were like, Hey, man, we're going to boycott you. We're going to do everything. Well, let me tell you something. I ain't against cops. I want our cops protected. But I find it awfully interesting. As long as it's the citizens that are being targeted, the cops just don't give a fuck. So, but as a local person, we are trying to take steps so we can figure out what can we do locally to try to make sure that this doesn't happen here in our own backyard. Um, during our last meeting a couple weeks ago, we asked if this individual body would like to meet again to be able to talk about next steps. Um, some of the things we talked about is how to continue to reinforce that community and law enforcement work together in harmony. Um, what is it that... Now, notice that he said talk, 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 talk. The reason why he says talk, 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 they don't want a motherfucking solution. Fuck, that'll wreck their goddamn grave, gravy train. That's what the fuck's going on here. We had a number of individuals sitting up here in front that spoke to, from a personal standpoint, what it meant to them back in the day when they were um, approached by law enforcement, how they felt, and then law enforcement individuals talked about some of the things that made them choose to be a member of law enforcement and why it was important to them and why they are a member of our community, not just a member of the community that happens to wear a, 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 a law enforcement uniform. Now notice he's going, ah, 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 ah. The reason why he's going, ah, 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 is he's a new trainee in this fucking con. That's what the fuck's going on, man. Now, notice how these motherfuckers will go over and over and over, say a whole bunch of big words. They can, they, they will take and fill up a goddamn dictionary. Blacks, uh, a full book, a, a book full of all kinds of words and not say anything. You'll hear the, you'll hear the con shit that's going on. And they can talk forever and ever and ever, and they're not fucking cut off. But if anybody in the general public um, has a question or has a solution, they're cut off real fucking quick. Members in the community, and because we need them, they are here. Our community members need to continue to feel safe when we see law enforcement. So what is it, where is the disconnect coming? What can we do as a body to try and help dissolve that? Disconnect is another one of their con grant words that are used. Disconnect. They have key words that these con men will use. Examples are, this is under grants writing. If you look at, there's something called the Grantmanship Center. I think they're out of Los Angeles. They've been around since the early 90s. They actually have classes back in the early 90s where they would charge each person 490 motherfucking dollars to learn to be a fucking con. Implement, stakeholder, partnership, partner, collateral, volunteer. You'll hear, you'll hear the key words of what these cons use. From a collaboration standpoint. See, collaboration, the average person don't use that word. That's, that's a grants writer's word. That's a bullshit word right there. Collaboration. All that fucking means is a group of ideas. But they want to try to bullshit you with these big motherfucking words. Why we feel threatened one way or the other. There was one gentleman who was like 6'6", six, six, who actually spoke. His name was Alfredo. He said, when they see me, they, a law enforcement approaches me a lot differently than they approach the Lyles over there because it's a big difference. So from a, a perception standpoint, how often does that occur? And it doesn't need to occur. And we don't know what goes through individuals' minds from a day-in, day-out basis. But at the end of the day, if everybody is treated with respect, both law enforcement and individuals in the community, then a lot of the things that we are having to deal with today will go away. Now, here's the thing. Cop automatically knows if there's somebody walking down the road with a backpack, he can fuck with them. 
chances are either this guy is homeless, maybe he's uh, maybe he decided that he wanted to just do some uh, low rent uh, 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 traveling sightseeing or something like that. He knows he can fuck with that person in a backpack. He knows he can fuck with somebody walking down the road. But now somebody's got a three-piece suit, and uh, and they, they happen to uh, belong to different civic organizations, and they're not on food assistance or anything like that, uh, public assistance. He ain't going to fuck with them because nine times out of ten, they got a lawyer just waiting to fucking sue their ass. See, the poor person, if he could go to all kinds of lawyers and say, hey, I got this solid case. No, nah, no, nope, no. Nope. Because here's the thing. A lawyer in the same town is not going to sue a cop in the same town. Why? Because a cop just might catch that lawyer uh, uh, who had drank a little bit too much alcohol at a high-priced restaurant, and then they can arrest him for... Uh, uh, drinking while driving while intoxicated or whatever the hell they want to do but if a lawyer is from another town they're not going to be able to fuck with them as much um, so part of our, our goal is trying to determine what are the steps that we can do as a community between law enforcement and community members to try and make sure that as we continue to work together everybody's working together for the same goal that same goal is to make Bay County a great place to live, work, and play for all of its residents. It doesn't matter whether you wear a uniform or you don't wear a uniform. At the end of the day, when you go to sleep, whether you're law enforcement or whether you're a young lady like this young girl sitting over here, or whether you're old like myself the past for Friday, you want to feel safe. How is it that we can get to a point where everyone in this community can feel safe? And that's what we're here about. We're not here to point fingers. We're not here to assess blame. We're here to get to the next step related to... See, see, the reason why they don't want to point fingers and they don't want to put a blame on anybody is they can keep the fucking gravy train going. That's what the fuck that shit's all about. But if you come out and you say, hey, the fucking problem is is these goddamn clowns are, 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 are basically let out and told fuck with whatever you want. And I highly suspect the cops get paid cash off the books all over the United States for jailing the harmless, the homeless, and the poor who can't afford to have an attorney on retainer's fee year round. Let's not point no motherfucking fingers. God damn, that would wreck the fucking gravy train. Why is it important to us to get to a place where everyone is working in a collaborative method?